Okay, this is Steve uh, coming at, coming at you again from the end of our dock. Uh, this is Space R73 here. R78 is on the other side. Uh, this is a video about uh, naughty costs. Uh, I'm entitling it Naughty Costs, and that's kind of naughty, N-A-U-G-H-T-Y, but it's short for nautical. And it's about the cost of vessels. And vessels make up a really core part of the project for a whole bunch of reasons I won't go into here. I'm just gonna discuss cost because whenever somebody sees a vessel, whether it's on a trailer or it's sailor power or it's in a slip or it's out on the water and it's a great big huge vessel that makes them go, wow, what a lifestyle. Well, the first thing they see are all these dollar signs in their head, how much that thing costs. And I want to discuss how we get around almost all of those. And you're gonna see some boats coming and going during this video, kayakers, power, sail, because people are coming and going as they go off to places on the Puget Sound hundreds of miles from here and as they come back. And it's also summer, so kayakers coming by. So this cost video is about the different pieces of the nautical puzzle that is a vessel, whether it's sail or power. And the first part is the capital cost, and that's covered by Selma, like in Alabama, technology. And that's where the vessel buys itself. So we don't pay for a vessel. We simply sell digital franchises in order to fund the vessel purchase, and then we pay cash for it so we don't have debt, and we don't have contracts, and we simply own it. Fee simple, free and clear, and we don't have to worry about the capital cost anymore. It's right now, it's now ours to do anything we want with it. We can literally check it out of the country and take it to another part of the world and never come back when we have free and clear, fee simple ownership of a vessel. And the second big cost is moorage. And moorage really gives people pause when they're buying a vessel. That's why so many people put these big boats that are a pain in the butt to launch and a pain in the butt to trail on a trailer and stick them in the side yard or the backyard or even pay for them to be on a rental lot before they go use them again. And moorage isn't going to cost us on a variable or marginal cost basis because really early in the project we're going to start buying marinas so that we own the moorage and the marina pays for its own maintenance and its own ongoing costs like taxes and improving the restroom facilities and making the docks better and polishing up the dolphins. Those are the things that are three. If it's a piling, it's just one. If it's a dolphin, it's three. Uh, those take maintenance and the docks take maintenance and cleaning and that will all be covered by the marketing prowess of the marina. Uh, that way we don't have to pay moorage. So moorage goes away if we own the marinas and certainly we have to pay the capital cost But we use Selma technology to acquire the marinas as well and then the next big cost beyond buying the vessel and taking care of where to store it is the maintenance and the maintenance is going to be almost completely without costs except for some capital costs up front when we buy a haul out facility which may be bonded with a marina purchase or it may not be oftentimes it will be in a less expensive place to do the haul out and the maintenance on the hard because it's less expensive to use a more remote location for that there's less regulations there's less worries about noise there's less worries especially if it's a different country, worries about the environment when you're in a more remote location than when you're in a major city where if you snort or if you sneeze, they want to tax you, fine you, make rules about what you can do. You can't even spray with a spray gun unless you're in a tent where you get to put respirators on to breathe the stuff. And that doesn't mean we're not going to treat the environment with world-class state-of-the-art respect. We are. It just means that we're not beholden to the rules of a major governmental agency because we're in a high-density location. That's not where you put a haul-out facility. And we'll have dry docks so we can do the very large vessels. We'll have 
large lifting sling so we can lift a 130 foot long vessel ourselves and all we'll really have once the facility is paid for which will take a month or less for just about anything that we're going to buy with the equipment these are being given away for pennies on the dollar like the boats are because the nautical and maritime industry is on hard times and people are bailing and they just want a little bit of money out for 30 or 40 years of a boatyard that they had that they can't seem to get enough money to pay for the mortgage payment and the property tax bill and all of that stuff that we won't have any trouble with. So that's the maintenance part of it. Also the labor that will be contributed by interns, by people who are contributing labor and skilled labor, worked on boats in the past, want to trade that labor for digital franchises, either an upgrade from one they already own and they want the fancier one and they don't want to pay for it or they haven't quite gotten in the habit or in the rhythm of promoting their way to the next one. So they just want to go work in the sun, drink some beers, have fun with some of their group, their tribe, or other tribes that are coming to do work on that vessel during that month or that week, rotate around, not people working for six months unless they really, really want to. And that will be how we get our labor. We won't be paying for expensive yacht maintenance labor because we'll have all kinds of people who are on the waiting list to get some extra brownie points, extra franchise credits towards the next step up in the feeding chain, so to speak, by putting some time in on the vessels. And by the way, that will also work for captains and first mates and uh, uh, electricians and engineers that run the engine rooms on the large vessels and chefs. They will contribute their time in exchange for franchises, but they'll also be marketing while they're on the vessels as well. We're not just gonna market for the people who come to mastermind on the vessels and who come to have fun with their prospects and their team members or tribe members who they're learning how to have fun again because most people haven't had very much fun their whole lives. They've, once they get past their teens, all it is is work, 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 and then go to grandma's house for a week at the end of a hard work year and people have to relearn how to have fun. So the people who are captains and the people who are chefs and the people who are first mates and the people who want to teach boat diesel, not just work on the diesels and on the gen sets and on bright work are going to make money while they're aboard the vessels as well as get credit as if they were being paid for those really valuable, high paying jobs that they're doing in digital franchises. You're kind of getting cake and eat it too and having fun and meeting people all around the world wherever we're going with the boats. The next one is uh, uh, fuel and fuel will be covered by production currency and I have down here uh, pounds of flesh and we spell flesh P H L E S H flesh without an F with a PH and that's going to be the currency of the tribe pounds of flesh pound sterling of flesh if you will uh, 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 take uh, some flesh out of their hide uh, that will be our currency and that will be traded for professional services that somebody wants their taxes done, somebody wants some copy written, somebody wants a website built, you'll be able to exchange that skill with other tribe members for pounds of flesh. So you can turn around and buy possibly even digital franchises, upgrades, but also other services and fuel credits so that you can take one of the vessels out if you're checked out as a captain or you can get aboard as a crew and all kinds of things happen when you have some flesh in your pocket. So pounds of flesh. So a, a digital currency inside the tribe that can be used for a variety of purposes, including covering your fuel costs and uh, a, a, a slip fee when you're out on the water somewhere and there's a slip fee, it's just covered by the purser of the vessel and then it comes out of your pounds of flesh and you don't even have to bring cash. You just bring your favorite booze and your favorite bong and your favorite pair of whatever, swim trunks or whatever toys you want to bring. And there's going to be a lot of toys too, not just the big boats. There's going to be the what we call the Mosquito Fleet, which is this huge collection of smaller vessels that are going to be aboard the yachts and scurrying around the yachts and manned by kids and teenagers and young adults that want to put that part of the thing in. Uh, skiffs and windsurfers and sea kayaks and catamarans, beach cats, 
and all kinds of nautical, naughty toys, we call them, that can explore upriver systems and go bird watching in unique places and be able to pedal around in a pedal boat, a pedal sea kayak, a sea breacher, all kind of windsurfers, you name it, wet bikes will have it aboard these larger vessels. That's one of the reasons for the larger vessels is so they can store four, six, eight, ten, twelve different toys that can be launched in a heartbeat and don't have to be stored in a garage somewhere and hauled somewhere. The vessel is a water toy hauler when you get up into the 60, 70, 100 feet. They can store a lot of toys and you can have an awful lot of fun on video and here comes a whole bunch more money because people want to live that way. They don't want to do the way that everybody else is living. So then, uh, let's see, we have insurance. Uh, the rest of this is really from reserve funds that are going to be from the money that doesn't go out in cash, which is over 50%. The rest of the money is going to go towards Selma's uh, new vessel acquisitions, new island acquisitions, new high country born network properties that let you do the conveyor belt thing, hitch a ride to the next born station 100 miles down the coast and learn something new, meet somebody new, have a new experience, see a completely different kind of vessel. There's sailing there, there was motorized here because it was colder, windier, less windy, and just not as fun to be on a sailboat down there. Now there's a sailboat, you get to learn to sail, you get to put sails up, you get to work on a square rigger, you get to, it's a different experience than the power vessels. Uh, but the Tribe Reserve Fund is to cover things like insurance, uh, registration, license fees, documentation fees that are ongoing, and you won't have to pay for those either. Those will be out of the production of the tribe, and you won't even see it. They'll, they'll just be covered, which is just cool. I don't have to bring money. All you have to bring is you know, your favorite stuff that you would bring on vacation. If you went to a timeshare, you'd bring you know, some of your favorite stuff, your favorite you know, ghetto blaster and your favorite whatever, card decks and whatever you want to bring, your books. Uh, but there's going to be libraries aboard these boats. There's going to be collections of digital media. There'll be things you can learn when you come in from playing on the boats. That's when you spend an hour or so at night maybe listening in on a small group of three or four people that are talking about a really interesting part of marketing online or that are talking about a, a film everybody watched in their stateroom and they come and they discuss it around the table, have a, you know, a, a, a brandy out of a big snifter glass and it's poured by somebody from behind the bar and then you go back to your stateroom and whatever, make whoopee, whatever you want to do in your room, do some reading, uh, do a little more research on what you just talked about, get on the internet, there's be high speed internet on almost all these vessels except maybe the very smallest ones. If you're going up a river on a kayak, there won't be internet on it. But you could take your iPad and probably a, if you're up a river in BC, you're not going to have a cell tower or a satellite connection on your iPad. <laughs> in fact, we're going to try to leave most of those behind because you want to divorce yourself from the asynchronous devices when you're on vessels and learn about this other stuff that everyone wants to learn, it turns out. And everyone kind of wants to leave all that digital crap behind and just enjoy climbing up a mast and being in the crow's nest and being up there and pretending you're on the front of the Titanic or dragging from the back on a surfboard or taking a beach cat out and just hauling butt on one hull in a trapeze with your favorite friend next to you that's naked somewhere. Because there's nobody in sight because you've gotten away from the land, away from the maelstrom, away from the mayhem and the mess of the human species and you're offshore where you actually get a life and you actually get some restoration of sanity to your brain after all this mess that we do on the continents. So that's the cost discussion. There's probably a couple of other little lurking things but I've covered the basic most expensive parts of the vessel. And by the way, these principles apply to the islands and the big equestrian high country ranches and the Bourne stations, they're all gonna cover their own cost too. So once you're in, you kind of have this crazy wonderland, Alice in Wonderland, this must not be real, this is too good to be true. Well, we built it that way because it sells. It sells itself when it's this good to be true. And that's how a product if you want to call it that, it isn't. It's a night ship. It's something very different than some kind of product or service. We don't like to call it that. So um, that's the cost discussion.